or at least in terms of lectures we will, which is, you know, remember we have like our source data, which is basically like our raw data. Um, and we have like individual tables and we could have data that comes from, you know, like users that come from HubSpot and users that come from Mixpanel, right? And users that come from like Salesforce, okay? And, you know, there's like two different things. One is like, we don't want to duplicate our users uh, and like list them, you know, three times. The other thing is maybe we have some users from here that we don't have there. So we want a complete kind of a manifest or, or list of all of our users, uh, but we don't want to duplicate them. And then the other thing is, so we say like complete list, uh, say combined list, but not duplicated. And then the second thing is like we want to merge data from different sources, okay? Uh, meaning that, okay, like maybe Salesforce has phone numbers, but HubSpot doesn't, right? Or, or Mixpanel does not. So that's like the purpose of our integration step, okay? Um, so if this is our source data, here are our, like your raw data. Um, we'll call this our source because that's the DBT word. Then we know that the next thing is staging, right? Where we'll clean up each of these individual uh, tables, right? And, you know, maybe just select certain data. We'll coerce the data to be the right form. We'll standardize it so that if we say, you know, name over here or first name, last name over here, we also use first name, last name over here, right? Uh, and then finally, like as we said, integration will combine it. So let's move on to integration then, uh, or any questions before we kind of show how we implement it. Beautiful. Okay, so how will integration work? So this is kind of what I'm showing, right? Is that we have these two different tables. Let me maybe make this bigger. So this, as you can imagine, is our staging tables. All right, so we have RDS companies and we have HubSpot companies, right? These are our two different sources of data. One thing to note, and the data almost like lines up, but one thing to note is that like we have this RDS company ID, um, but in our RDS companies, we don't have a HubSpot company ID. So I can maybe even delete that. And then in HubSpot companies, right, we also, we have names, this lines up, but we do not have RDS company ID. Okay, the reason why this becomes an issue is because ultimately what we want to do is we want to stack this stuff on top of one another, which is not so bad. Basically, all we need to do is do like select all, and eh, let's name the table columns. We'll say select uh, RDS company ID, comma name from uh, RDS companies, union all, so that this is, we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, union all, uh, the HubSpot, uh, union all, sorry, another select statement. And here we'll select HubSpot company ID, comma, uh, name from uh, HubSpot companies. All right, so this is like what we want to do is basically stack this on top of another. This will not work. I think it will compile, but basically like the select statement will not look to see that these columns uh, are named the same, but rather it will just be like, oh, you mean the first column name, like I'm just gonna stack the first column name on top of the first column name, right? First column name here on top of the, top of the first column here, uh, which is not what you want. Instead of what you would like to have is you wanna have like this result in that we, I kind of show you it down here, that when I have my RDS companies, I have nuns here, right? Because there is no HubSpot company ID. And when I have my HubSpot companies, I have nuns for the RDS company ID. So that is, that's the goal. So how do we achieve that? The main way is you make sure that when you do the select, the columns really need to line up. All right, so how do we do that? This means that we should probably do something like select RDS company ID, HubSpot company ID as null, comma name. All right, and I'll, I'll spend a little more time on that. And then the other thing we wanna do, hold on, give me one second. 
Uh, so we wanted to say select the RDS company ID, HubSpot company ID as null from RDS companies. But that is null as, right? Null no. as. Uh, thank you. Is it null as? Yeah, I think you're right. Null as. You're right. Null as HubSpot company ID. Um, union all. And here we want RDS company ID. So it'll be select null as RDS company ID, comma HubSpot company ID. So this is gonna result in what we want because well one, notice that we are lining up, right? The company, the column names this time do line up, right? RDS company ID, HubSpot name. And now here we have RDS company ID, HubSpot name. So that's good. Then what we're saying is when we're selecting from RDS companies, set all the HubSpot company IDs equal to null, right? And that's what we're getting, why we get that down here. And then when we're selecting from the HubSpot companies, uh, then, um, say, then set all the RDS company IDs as null, okay? So that's why we, when we're selecting from HubSpot, right, these things are null. So if we do this, this will give us our like merged uh, table or like temporary, you know, CTE. And then we're lining up, like name is just name, right? So I, ideally these things line up. In fact, like this is, this is how we're going to uh, combine the data, right? So in the next step, if this is our merged step, the next CTE will dedupe it. Meaning, you know, we have duplicated data. We have Alfred showing up twice here and Anna showing up twice here. How we get rid of these guys? We group them. And then we'll take the max for each of the columns, for each of the non-group columns. Why will that be good? Uh, well, first let's do it. Um, so let's say we call this uh, merged as, and you can imagine this is wrapped in a CTE. And then we'll say, uh, select all from merged uh, and we'll, we'll do a group by the name okay so what will that do that will you know make sure we only have one record for each name and then remember when you do a select statement like this you're able to specify like select name but you cannot do select like in snowflake at least you cannot do select hubspot company ID because this is not an aggregate or something you're grouping by. So instead what you can do is select max of HubSpot company ID as HubSpot company ID, and I'll explain this in a second, comma, select uh, max of uh, RDS company ID as RDS company ID. So what this is doing is saying, okay, when this thing is present, when a HubSpot company ID is present, which say it's not in this case, but it is in this case. So when it's present, uh, display it, like keep it, because none is not gonna be the maximum between these two values, right? So we're gonna keep the non-null values here, uh, which is exactly what we want, right? So by using the max, we'll select we'll be able to, you know, we this time we're not violating that rule, we are using an aggregate, and also, right, we're getting the non-null values, which is what we want. Right? That will result in something like this, okay, where we've collapsed our rows that are, are duplicated by the name, right, where we're saying, okay, this guy's the same, if they have the same name, um, and you have to determine, right, based on domain, based on, like you want, uh, based on talking to a product manager, oftentimes it could be like the phone number, right, is a way that is a very good identifier if you have phone numbers. Uh, you could group by multiple columns, right, like the name and maybe the city or zip code if you have that information. So you want something, you know, you kind of can figure it out. You want something detailed enough so that it actually is uh, the same entity, but you're not, like say there's 20 Bob Smiths, we don't want to collapse them all into one. Um, all right. So, yeah. so, so why now you, you using a join? Like, 
Uh, how would that help you? What, what do you well, mean? You're drawing on name, right? Is it like, yeah, I'm not sure, like you have two tables. One is uh, RDX company ID and name. Another is like HubSpot company ID name, right? Mm -hmm. Is it? Then you can just use the name drawing, right? Well, okay, if I join, oh, I see. Um, I think the, hmm, it's not a bad idea. Can we do that? As opposed to a union, I'll have to think about that. Um, so join, okay. go ahead. I think it's better to use union because union won't give you all the records. It will give you the, if it's there are two records, it will give you one instead of that one. Yeah, but we are, uh, maybe that's fair. Uh, I mean, in, in, we are using a union all. I, I think I'll have to, I do want to think about that a little bit more. Like we are using a union all, right? Where union all gives, doesn't collapse the data where they line up. Um, and then we're specifically deciding where to collapse it. Uh, it's probably, I mean, I guess if you join on multiple things, I think that with the group by, right, we can group by multiple entities uh, and, and that will collapse based on multiple entities. I'm trying to think if we could do the same thing with the join, maybe. Um, to me, but then can we really get the none? I guess we don't need to, you know, like, like I guess the point would be we don't need to even uh, put a none here for the HubSpot company ID. It might be a way to like look to see if this data lines up. Um, I'll have to, I do probably want to think about that more rather than think through it out loud. Because uh, I would have, it's been a while since I've really thought that critically about this pattern. This it's is a, like as a as a beginner, I I don't understand why you would use a join or a you know like when would you use one, when would you use the other? That's well, join use. join is right going to be so. Notice the union stacks our data, right? And then we can kind of collapse it based on certain categories. So to me, like uh, like right, I'm saying, hey, well, let's collapse this based off of like the name or let's say it's name and phone number, or name, phone number, and city. Like something like that, it, where you're saying, hey, we believe these two records are the same if these you know, three columns line up. To me, that makes sense, I guess. Like, like that seems logical. There may be a way to accomplish something similar with a join. I haven't thought it through. Uh, but this does seem, to me, that this seems like the most straightforward to me. Right, stack it on top of each other, get a kind of entire list. If nothing else, it breaks it down into more steps, which to me is generally a good thing, uh, right? Because we'll stack these all on top of each other, and then in a separate step, can basically merge right these two things together. I'm trying to think what else there'd be another reason. Yeah, I haven't I haven't thought it through with a join, so. I'll, uh, I'd have to think about that more. Oh, Jack, what, what's, what's the, the reason, reason I haven't... Yeah, I, I what, didn't leave early. The reason for this... Mm. I think the reason for this is, you know, here you get to break this down into, like, these two steps, which I, I personally like, which is the stacking on top of each other, right? Like, let's just get a combine of all the data listed out, right? So here we're not... You know, we have our duplicated data, and then we can determine, like, how to group this data by whether it's, you know, these three, th how to collapse the data, right? Which is here, we're just using the name, but you could imagine using multiple columns. So, uh, yeah, I like, I don't know. I, I personally, I guess, like that. Um, yeah. But I, I would have to, like, visualize the join uh, in order to compare it, which is a little tricky for me to do right now. I think, I think companies also use union all as you say is easy because the same issue we have today in, and my cloud architect says use union and I was trying to do it with the join getting the same result but he, he keeps telling me to do union do union so I think uh, maybe more clear with this one yeah so I, I think it is like I like seeing this mat like seeing this kind of 
here's all the combined data, you know, here. And you can just, you know, select this CTE and view everything and then kind of now like take a look at it and then collapse it later on. That, that to me makes sense. Um, I'll, I'll admit, I, like I said, I don't think I've given equal kind of benefit of the doubt to doing a join. I'll ha I'd have to try it out uh, and, and see. But this is, this is the typical pattern that you'll see is with the union all. The other thing, maybe another reason is uh, when you get to Jinja, what you'll do is, this is really like a loop. Uh, which part of the loop is this thing right here where you, you know, select the call, you can think of like looping through uh, uh, various tables, selecting effectively the same columns, and then, and just changing the table name. And, lot, and that is a pattern that we'll employ. And like, and you can imagine when you have, you know, customers coming from 20 different tables, then as you'll see with Jinja, being able to like write, have a loop, uh, generate the SQL for you, and just stick a union all in between each one of these queries uh, is is a nice thing. So maybe that's another reason. I don't know. So these are you know following this pattern at least like this is the steps is effectively you'll you need to stack the data on top of each other. In order to do that, you'll set one of the, like any missing columns. You'll say okay, put that null as. Right, so here the obvious one is company ID, but it could be something else. It could be this one has the phone number and the other one doesn't. So you do null as phone number, and then any missing data, right? You'll be like, you'll when you collapse it, you'll get the present data because it will, uh, you'll just select the max, right? So that will be, uh, you know, th that will kind of take care of that, which is nice take care of you know just keeping the present data and getting rid of the, the null values and what's left I think then you you know this is kind of the final result that we're looking for which is now we don't have our duplicated data anymore instead we're just keeping the present values from each and where we have one and not the other uh, you know we have the say this record only existed in RDS we're still holding on to it and we just say hey we don't have a link to HubSpot company ID uh, you know we only got had this record in RDS okay in, in our uh, RDS database All right, so this is this is the pattern you can see so I wrote this out here this is why I showed it to you in Excel first it's it feels like a little overwhelming. Um, but, okay, what am I doing? I'm selecting from, you know, the staging tables, HubSpot and RDS. I'm then selecting, I, the, here I'm doing it a little bit, like adding a step just to break it down even more, uh, where I'm selecting the columns I want, right, the company ID as the HubSpot company ID. So from this source, we'll name it HubSpot uh, company ID and then null as we talked about as the RDS company ID and name and then once I get to RDS selected then HubSpot company ID becomes the null value over here and then company ID as the RDS company ID and also select the name and then we stack the data on top of each other here let's just see that so here you just have to make sure the columns line up and you know I can do select all from merge companies and preview it and you can see the result right is that this is my union all data right uh, this step right here and just to show you it briefly you can see we have this all these are obviously from HubSpot so all these are from HubSpot and then later on we'll get the ones if I go down far enough okay now we finally get the ones from RDS Right, and we set the HubSpot company ID to null, and then what we'll do is we'll uh, sorry collapse this by doing a group by on the uh, name, right? So that's what we're doing down here with the group by name, and as we said, we'll get the um, the present value, right? By using the max, when HubSpot company ID is present, we'll keep that one, and when it's null, we'll throw it out and do the same thing for RDS. Um, and that's effectively it. You know, this is not 
But that's effectively it. We can do select all from final. Right? And that that will build this. This is by the way like the hardest. Generally the integration steps are the hardest queries uh, to get done. Like their staging is, is a bit of work, like cleanup. But then integration, right, is where you combine it, where you have to think through, okay, how do we say that this record is the same as this record? Like, when do I kind of feel confident about that? Um, you know, and, and it results in generally like kind of long queries in order to do that. Uh, so that's, if you can understand these steps, then like conceptually, then I think the query itself will make more sense. Okay, so let me just review it one last time. Sorry for being so repetitive. Uh, right, have, we need the data, we need the columns to, to line up. We, we set the missing column as null values, right? Null as HubSpot company IDs. We then stack these on top of each other with the union all, right? Then we collapse the data by doing a group by where like any, any uh, kind of columns that we say, hey, when these things are the same, we're saying this is the same record and we use the max. Uh, in order to keep our present values and get rid of the null ones. Uh, and then that's basically it. That, that leads us to our deduped data. All right, so those are the steps that you'll be working through. Okay, in this scenario, we have only like three or four columns. What if we have like 100 columns? Yeah, I mean, there's different things. One is, this is where something like the DBT utils package will help right so okay. yeah so we'll get to this dbt utils package in a few lessons but this is basically something night nice, like a, a library that python that dbt wrote for you um which you know has these different like instead of saying select star you can call this method called star and it has arguments of like star accept right so you can say hey I, we have 100 columns, we want all of them except for, you know, 10 of them. Let's do select star except these 10, something like that, right? So this is a, a useful package, right? And you can start to see, I don't know. Here, here's an example, select star except these couple of fields, right? And then same thing, you can set this as a variable. Like this is Python, effectively what you're using here. You know, it's a it's a Python method that they wrote for you. And you can set variables and, and things like that, which will make it easier. Okay. Cool. So this is something useful to go through and we will be looking at some of these methods. It's, it's a nice thing, as you might imagine. All right. Um, I think that qu other questions 